Let's talk about that approach in a little more detail. When applying adjustment layers in combination with smart filters, you should consider lowering the opacity on the adjustment layer to allow the adjustment and the filter to blend together. In this example, we lowered the opacity on the black and white adjustment layer to 62% uh, to allow some of the color to reappear in the image. It should be noted this is almost the opposite of what we're doing when, we're, when we lower the opacity on the filter layer. Lowering the opacity on a filter allows more of the unfiltered image to show through. Lowering the opacity on the adjustment layer allows more of the original filter to show through. The torn edges filter can be used to make images look old and worn. There may be times when the default filter pictured on the slide will be appropriate for your editing needs, but just like other filters, they can be used in combination with blending modes, masks, and adjustment layers to produce multiple varying effects. The examples on this slide, just a few, uh, just a few of the results that can be produced using the default torn edges filter in combination with other Photoshop adjustments. You can see they all are different in their own way. Some may be more uh, or less appropriate for your needs at any given time. And so if we jump over to Photoshop, I'll just show you how to create some of the things that are created here. And so the default torn edges filter, if we open that same image, um, I of course have duplicated my background layer and converted it to be a smart object. If we go to the filter menu and filter gallery, we can change the filter being used from diffuse glow and we can find the torn edges option. Um, the default one actually looks pretty good if you're looking for a stylized effect. Maybe you're making, you know what it reminds me of? Um, the horror books that you would read when you were younger and it would have like different short stories about uh, scary things. And so if you're looking for like an effect like that, then this might work. Um, however, there are different things that you could do to make it look more or less intimidating. And so one of the things you can always do is you can change the layer blending mode and you can apply different blending modes to your changed layer and it will blend with the layer beneath and because I duplicated my layer um, you can see it's blending with the original. This one almost looks like it's snowy outside. It does. Yeah. Looks like it's snowy. And so you click through and see what the options might be for you. And now this is the overlay option and that's one of the options that's uh, it, as an example in the slideshow but it's a little bit intense and so we could always apply an overlay onto the filter and then lower the opacity. You can do this either on the layers panel like I'm doing, or if I reset that to default, you can always do it on the um, blending modes option on the filter. And so you can come into the blending options dialog box and you could lower the opacity of the change. And so that's an even different uh, example than we had previously shown. But you can also do, I think I had was it overlay. I can do the overlay filter. And so now I'm creating a stylized effect from one filter. All I have is the torn edges applied. You can also do the paintbrush technique that we did on the previous um, example. And so if I select the layer mask on the smart filter with a nice soft brush with the opacity set low, you can come through and you can start painting the image back in. And this almost looks like um, the opening sequence to a TV show. Is it Downton Abbey that has this? I can't remember what TV show it is, but it looks, it looks old and worn, but it looks like you have hand painted the image back in. Um, the more that you paint, however, um, it'll look less hand-painted and more realistic. And so maybe certain parts of the image you want to see the detail, like on the front of the facade of the building, but on the grass down here, or the, it's not grass, it's a paver, you just want to see a little bit of the color shine through. Whatever you choose to do, you can create a custom effect by doing all the things that we've done so far in this lecture. So lower the opacity on the change layer, you can apply, oh, one thing we haven't done, maybe we should try that, is you can apply an adjustment layer. And so you could do a gradient map, which is an adjustment layer. And the gradient map, you can choose different gradients and they'll apply different effects. That one's kind of creepy yeah, that is really to cool. your image. Um, again, if you like kind of the look, but maybe it's a little too intense, you could always lower the opacity on that layer or you could change the you could change um, the blending mode. And actually, I kind of like that one, even though this one isn't uh, demoed in the slideshow. Um, I don't love it though. I, I feel like I can't see the top of the picture so you can always come back and you can paint more of the picture into focus or into the, the final design using your layer mask. So I know we covered a lot in that demo so I would like you to attempt to apply the torn edges filter to any image. It doesn't have to be this one and then I would like you to modify it until you create a custom design to your filter.